presentation <laughs> order. This is the second paper of the session on smooth video delivery. Uh, and um, the, the presenter is going to be uh, Moda Rohaki, <laughs> University of uh, Tehran. Uh, she's not one of the authors, but none of the authors uh, come and present it, so she's going to present it. And she's the collaborator of Shirley Shoma Hamad. So, um, and she's going to uh, present for us the continuous one way available bandwidth change detection high definition video content. Thank you so much for your kindly introduction. Uh, this, for, this paper is about uh, continuous one way available bandwidth change detection in a high defi definition video conferencing. Uh, in this presentation, uh, first I introduce the um, uh, objectives of the papers, and then uh, I review the proposed method, and finally uh, some simulation results are shown. Um, uh, video conferencing is uh, one of the uh, new applications of multimedia, uh, and uh, it has um, growing in recent years. Uh, and uh, multi video conferencing is a, a high bandwidth application. And uh, as the uh, resolution of the videos uh, increased, the total bandwidth and bandwidth requirement will be increased. Uh, so uh, most of this, um, so uh, it's uh, very ch challenging. And uh, furthermore, the quality of experience is uh, one of the uh, key role in uh, video conferencing application. And uh, it is very impo important in the quality of experience of the user. Uh, so uh, most of the um, solutions uses dedicated network uh, in, in order to uh, transmit the uh, information, uh, so, such as uh, Cisco telepresence tele solutions. But uh, using the um, dedicated network uh, at uh, the cost of the um, uh, application, so um, the internet best of our services is usually preferred. Uh, but uh, uh, best of our services uh, itself has some uh, difficulties, uh, for example, because, uh, of, uh, because of the uh, dynamically changing the uh, bitrate of the network, the quality of the uh, service uh, cannot be guaranteed. Uh, and uh, the um, congestion can, can be uh, occurred in the uh, network, and uh, the, the final user uh, quality of experience uh, can be done. Uh, all to whole of the uh, session can be interrupted. Um, lots of solutions have been proposed in the literature in, in order to uh, handle the, this uh, dynamic bitrate, ch bitrate change. Uh, for example, uh, this solution, uh, it's um, a solution for adapting uh, the rate uh, in according to the bitrate fluctuation in unicast application. And in this uh, equation, the X uh, PPS is sending rate in packet per second, RTT is round trip time, and uh, P is uh, last event rate. But uh, using the, this equation has some difficulties. For example, uh, it is uh, based on round, tr uh, round time trip, and uh, it is not, uh, cannot be used for one-way traffic. For example, in, uh, if, if we use uh, teleconferencing, the pass between sender to receiver and the pass uh, between receiver to sender is not the same. So uh, calculating the, uh, the, the statistics, statistic of the one-way traffic is critical. And uh, the uh, next uh, drawback, it, it is too slow. Uh, and uh, some second text to uh, uh, report the um, error to the sender. And also, it needs some uh, uh, control packets, and some control packets should be sent periodically that uh, add the overhead of the network, and bandwidth, bandwidth network, and processing power. Uh, the purpose method in this uh, paper is based on uh, Bayesian congestion det detection and uh, uses the, um, the inter-arrival time of the video packet. It is too fast according to the simulation results, and uh, it uh, can be used in one-way traffic. Uh, and since it doesn't uh, need any control packet, it uh, uh, doesn't impose any additional overhead to the uh, network. Um, at the first step of uh, the, this purpose method, at the first step, uh, we should gather the information of the network. This information consists of uh, determined arrival time and interarrival delay and also size of the packet. Then uh, the others uh, define a, a variable, uh, namely J, and it is defined by di divided by size of packet i. Uh, and uh, they observe that uh, j is a random variable. Uh, they uh, observe the uh, behavior of the network. And uh, um, they observe that it is a random variable with parity distribution. 
And as you may know, parity dis distribution have another, uh, has another parameter, uh, raw with its shape information, and it can be uh, considered uh, by detecting the behavior of the network. And uh, because of the um, complex behavior of the internet uh, network connection, uh, raw itself can uh, be considered as a random variable. And um, the others uh, observe the behavior of the um, um, HD video conferencing application. And uh, they saw that the expectation value of raw uh, is, um, uh, can estimate the uh, bitrate fluctuation of this uh, application uh, accurately. So they propose that uh, the expectation value of raw uh, is considered as a um, uh, bitrate estimator for this uh, application. You can see in, uh, this uh, um, feature in this slide. Uh, in this slide, the um, solid line is the actual bit, uh, video bandwidth, and the dotted line is the value of the ERO parameter. And as you can see, when the uh, bitrate of the uh, uh, actual video is decreased, the value of ERO is also decreased, and when it is increased, the value is increased, and uh, so on. Uh, and uh, this part is zoomed there. And as you can see, we have some bitrate fluctuations, but uh, the bitrate uh, totally is decreasing. And uh, the uh, value of ERO uh, shows the, this decrement in bitrate and uh, without affecting but by the uh, bitrate fluctuations. So uh, this, uh, this variable can estimate the um, fluctuation of the bitrate uh, accurately. In order to evaluate the um, uh, purpose method, uh, they uh, set up a simulation using NS2 and uh, some ST, um, standard definition and some high definition videos uh, have been used. Uh, the simulation setup is something like that. The S1 is encoder and S4 is decoder. And S2 and uh, S3 is used in order to generate some additional tra traffic other than the video. Um, the encoder bitrate is uh, mm, fixed. Uh, and uh, at the initial time, it's equal to the initial value. And at uh, mm, second two of the video, or at uh, frame 60 toward, it uh, changes to the secondary value for both HD and SD sequences. And here is the results for uh, HD videos uh, with, uh, with a one second RTCP interval. Uh, it should be noted that the recommended RTCP interval uh, is uh, five seconds. But um, as the others want to show the speed of the, their purpose method, they change this uh, interval to one second. And uh, as you can see, the response time of the purpose method mm, is much less than the other methods that uh, they compared the result with uh, two of the references of the paper. And uh, the results show that the response time of this uh, uh, method is much lower. Uh, also in this uh, method, the, the decoder should inform the, uh, should report uh, the, the bit of actuation to the, the encoder side. But uh, by considering this uh, additional time, uh, the, the response time of the purpose method is uh, much lower than the other methods. And also, um, this is the result for ST videos, uh, again with one uh, second RTCP interval. And again, the um, response time of the purpose method is much less than the other uh, methods. Uh, and uh, also they uh, considered one uh, unrealistic case for RTCP in order to show the performance of their methods better. It's for HD uh, videos and uh, uh, 200 millisecond RTCP interval. And it shows that uh, uh, although this uh, case is unrealistic for RTCP, their the, the method can overcome the RTCP-based uh, schemes. Uh, in conclusion, we can say that uh, the purpose method is one-way congestion detection algorithm, uh, and it is very fast according to the simulation result. Uh, it is uh, receiver-based, and uh, uh, it is not based on RTT. And since they don't need any um, additional uh, control packet, they, uh, it doesn't uh, add any overhead to the network. And simulation result shows that it is much faster than RTC-based methods. And finally, thanks. Yes. 
So is there <coughs> actually any congestion control taking place? Because uh, in the end, the receiver needs to tell the sender that it detected congestion and it should change the rate. Yes. Uh, do you actually do that? or? Yes, but it's not uh, done uh, periodically. Only when the bitrate is uh, changed, uh, they send one packet to inform the uh, encoder. The, the other methods uh, do this periodically. Okay? okay? So the overhead of this method is uh, much lower than that. But uh, they sh it should report the encoder. Okay. Yeah, I'll phrase it as a question. Um, you are assuming that you have uh, rather fine-grained control over the used video bandwidth. Because yeah. Because you are reacting that fast. And I, I sort of wonder how practical that is. I mean, if you, uh, uh, you know, want to cut down your video bandwidth by a factor of uh, two or three, well, you know, you just slice the picture in half or whatever. But to cut it down from, uh, you know, two megabit to 1.8 megabit, it's... If, if you take all these little steps, I wonder if you're not going to uh, influence the, uh, the quality of ex experience. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, if you're not going to make the quality of experience actually much worse, because the picture keeps changing every time and the user has to mentally adapt to, uh, uh, to the new picture mm -hmm. quality. And then yeah. by the time they've adapted, you know, it's going to get better again. And, yeah. and so I'm, I'm sort of wondering, but I think you only did simulations. Uh, what? Have you only done simulations or have you done user tests as well? Uh, I don't know because I'm not that, I, I don't yeah, know the details, yeah. but, but I but studied. It's, it, it's, it's sort of, I, I sort of wonder mm. whether it will actually increase the quality of experience when you uh, test on users. Okay, I can. One question or comment I would have is uh, uh, when you do the detection of the congestion, um, <coughs> if the codecs are also part of the overall equation to react to the congestion, right? Um, uh, or, or to the uh, problems, right? Um, it wasn't sort of clear if this is currently only a transport uh, um, problem that they try to address. Uh, or if they also have like a joint source and channel coding where also the source code and decoders would be coming. Because they actually argue that they do it at the receiver side. So if I detect um, congestion, can then the decoder do something in order to uh, maybe selectively sort of uh, move data and then maybe help the quality mm, experience? Yeah. So the connection mm. to the uh, coding might be an interesting problem here as well to actually address some of the quality of experience issues. Yeah. All right. Very good.